Vic. So we're going to get started here. We're going to talk about multiple output plugin for OBS as well as multi streaming and the different platforms, or I would say um, companies that offer multi streaming services. So with that, let's go ahead and get started here. All right. Now, from what I have here, this is the plugin that you're going to install in OBS. You're going to come here, you're going to type in for the OBS Studio plugins, you're going to type in multiple RTMP outputs plugin. This is primarily used for people who have a dedicated streaming PC. I would not recommend doing a single PC setup because when you're gaming on PC and you're streaming on PC, um, I can tell you, like, sending it to one platform is totally fine. You might be lucky enough to do two, which is totally fine. But if you're doing, for example, different encoders, like the people who have a, what is it, the 4060, 4070, the ones that can do the AV1 encoders, they primarily benefit, right? So it's not taxing their GPU as much. But for someone like me who has a 3080 Ti and I'm doing YouTube with the HVENC and then I need to switch it for Twitch and for Kick to, um, what is it? The, well, we'll see it here very shortly. <laughs> but there are different encoders and you're probably like, what? What's the difference? Well, different platforms have different requirements for encoders. So that's the difference in them. And you can't stream all of them at once because one, it's going to tax your GPU, which means that you're going to basically use a lot of GPU usage. Um, and the other is the bit rate, right? So what one poor platform may allow, another may not. So you might have to dial it back or downscale, et cetera. And we're going to get into that because Kick is very specific. Um, anyways, once you go here to this GitHub, it's going to redirect you here. You're going to basically get to where it says OBS multi RTMP. And how do you get to the installer? You're actually going to click on releases and then you're going to scroll down. What you're going to want to select if you're on Windows is probably the installer, unless you know you're savvy enough to do all of this. There's Linux and there's Mac OS as well. I will be putting the links below. All right. Now, with that being said, what we're going to talk about is this plugin once installed. I am not going to show you my Twitch because it does have my stream key in there, and that is something you never want to release to anybody. Um, the first thing you're going to do is add new target. So you can do this for YouTube, you can do this for Twitch, you can do this for Kick. If you have um, TikTok, there's actually a very handy plugin and it's called Verticals. I'm actually using the plugin right now so I can't really preview it on my screen. I don't know, maybe. Ah, yes, yes I can. Although it won't do that for my Verticals, but it will show it in my YouTube video. Anyways, when uh, you're doing that, you can actually in Vertical, which is made by Adam right here. And I think the new release is coming out Friday. Anyways, um, you can actually come here, put in your streaming RTMP service, your key. If you're doing it directly to TikTok or to Instagram, you would put those things in there and then you would create a hotkey. If you have a stream deck like myself, um, right here, you can actually set up some shortcuts um, or hotkeys and just push a button and it'll do it for you. I actually use my pedal to do most of that stuff though, so you can't really see my foot. I'm not gonna show that on, on uh, the video here, but you get the idea. Anyways, it's a push of a button and it starts and stops the stream for you, um, or if you're just doing a recording like I am right now, mine does the same thing. Anyways, it's a very handy, handy plugin because if I wanna do, for example, clips and post them on TikTok or post them on uh, YouTube Shorts or even Instagram, um, it comes in extremely handy to compile clips and I use DaVinci Resolve to do all my editing, but yeah, it comes in extremely handy. Anyway, you're gonna go to add a new target to do anything when it comes to setting up these different instances to stream on all platforms. Um, again, keep in mind, it's within your GPU limitations. So if you're gaming and you're streaming on a single PC setup, it's probably not ideal. However, there are services that are coming, that are gonna come in handy. So for my kick, I'm gonna go ahead and use this one because you all cannot uh, see the stream key here. Um, this one actually, when I am doing this, kick is a little specific, okay? There are some requirements in order for you to unlock 1080p. At all times that you want to unlock 1080p from your previous stream, you have to have two concurrent viewers um, at, basically two viewers at a given time for an entire hour for you to unlock it for your next stream. That is not a guarantee that it will stay at 1080p. 
Um, Kick is very specific about that. So if you're wanting the benefit of streaming to Kick without any loss in quality, you're gonna actually do this. You're gonna downscale it to 720p and everything else right here is basically on Kick's uh, setup here. I am using an RTMP to stream directly to the service that I'm using, which we'll talk about here very shortly. Um, but when it comes to doing this, if you have not met the qualifications to get to 1080p unlock, if you don't do it this way, your video is going to clip unless you downscale everything to 720p at 3500 kbps across all your platforms. I say this because I've went through the experience of going back and forth between the service as well as Kick, and Kick had explained everything to me about the requirements to unlock 1080p. Um, so keep in mind, if you're not consistent with streaming and have more than two viewers at a given time for over an hour, you're not gonna unlock the 1080p. This is probably the ideal option for you. I use this multiple output plugin when I am streaming to Twitch and YouTube at the same time. And then I basically use this one to stream to kick when I have to downscale it to 720p. That doesn't mean that I'm losing in quality. I've tested this out. This has been my workaround when I don't have 1080p unlocked. So I hope this helps those who have been struggling with kick where their videos are getting clipped. Um, I had someone mention it in the chat that I needed to do something. And I was like, okay, let me look into this. I got it fixed. I had no idea like for about maybe four or five streams, it literally clipped the entire like hour XYZ segments. So th this is gonna be your setup here for kick. Uh, Twitch, I'm not gonna go in here, but yes, you can basically do your entire Twitch setup. Now, the reason why you only see kick and Twitch is because I'm using my YouTube profile. So YouTube is like the main profile and then you can actually do different instances from there because YouTube will let you push really amazing um, encoders such as the AV1, the HNVEC, which is the one my card can only do, um, and then below that. So I don't get the benefits of the newer 4000 series uh, GPUs from NVIDIA, and I don't have an AMD GPU, but this is what I've learned what works for me. Now, if you would prefer to do 720p or you've unlocked the 1080p for all three of these platforms, then that's great, right? We won't need to use multiple output. Um, unless you prefer to do it this way and not pay for a service. And that's actually what we're gonna jump into next. So I looked at this from a particular streamer. I am not gonna throw streamers names out there. Um, I've never used this service, but I didn't know it existed. And I think this is pretty neat, but this is not the service that I use. Um, I think this one is supposed to be working with Kick in the future, or they now have the option of Kick but I believe the same rules apply with the kick requirements. I do not know how this particular setup is, but I know that with the one that I use, which we're gonna go to right now, which is Restream. Yeah, you can see all three of my channels. Um, Restream is very simple to set up. Now, if you don't want the watermark on your video with Restream, you do wanna pay for the standard service. I don't think anything more than five channels is ideal unless like you're a major company or a major name streamer who wants these benefits. I did voice some suggestions to them in regards to the situation and it looks like Kick and Restream are kind of working together to get the whole clipping thing taken care of. Um, but for now the workaround as I've worked with Restream was to do YouTube and Twitch to Restream and then Kick to use multiple output. Now I turn this off when I do that. It's as simple as doing that. Setting up is very easy as well. You can go to add any channel and then when you do, it's gonna ask you for your channel URL for here on Kick. It's gonna ask you for the RTMP for Kick and then your stream key. Once you set it up, it's gonna look like this and you can go into edit settings, but we're not gonna do that because I don't want y'all to see my stream key. Now, as far as for YouTube, it's basically gonna have you log into your YouTube channel. Same thing with Twitter. If you already logged in on your browser, you're just basically gonna authorize it and then it'll set it up. Um, when it comes to Twitch, it'll do the same thing. It'll ask you to authorize it and it'll automatically set it up for you. Now, this does not do any special thing unless you pay extra for like transcoding. Um, say you did a video and you wanna upload it and you wanted to push it out simultaneously, but you don't actually wanna be live. Well, then you can pay for transcoding hours. Personally, I don't wanna do that. I'd rather live stream 
And uh, since I don't have TikTok and Instagram Live unlocked yet, I haven't been able to test that out. But if I do, I'd probably alternate between turning these three off and then just streaming in vertical format to the other ones. I don't know how to make those two work yet as far as like one horizontal and then the other channel vertical. I, I don't think that's possible quite yet with Restream, but I did voice that suggestion for those who are asking. Um, if you have a workaround other than using multiple output for something like that, or even vertical, just streaming individually, uh, let me know. You know, I'm, I'm definitely open to feedback for it. But I do like the benefit of having a combined chat with Restream. And we're going to talk about that. So, oh, wait, I didn't install it on here. It's actually in my dock. And yes, you can actually make custom browser docs in OBS. I'm just looking for it right now. I labeled it chat. Wait, that's not the chat I'm looking for. Oh. Oh, I, I, I would have had to have set it up under my restream. <laughs> anyway, um, what it does is instead of you having to install their software, but they actually do have a, a chat widget here, um, you're able to install it and you're able to see all of your chats in one place. But if you actually set up Restream in OBS, it gives you a doc for chat and you can see all three chats on there, which I think is extremely amazing. Um, you can do it in a browser as well. So when you go live, you usually see an option here for chat. Uh, let me see. Uh, here we go. This is it. So this would be your chat right here. Um, and I think that that's really cool because you can do it through a browser, you can do it through an application, or when you initially log in on OBS using a custom RTMP, or I think it even gives you the option of Restream.io, um, you're able to use the browser doc or the doc that's set up in OBS and then just be able to see everything combined. Now, for those who have to do the work around where they haven't hit the threshold of 1080p, um, you can actually embed a kick browser doc by going to your kick profile, your, your dashboard, popping out the chat, copying the link, and then you can actually put this here in OBS under custom browser docs. As you can see, I have quite a few, right? And uh, what you can do is you can open up kick chat and then there you go. You have a browser doc with kick chat and then you could have your restream with Twitch and with YouTube and you can still interact amongst all three platforms. Um, one thing I was testing out with the chat feature with Restream was um, unified chats, like a relay where it tells you when someone is commenting in one area, everybody else on the other platforms can see that. Personally, I don't like that feature. Um, and I, I've tested it, but what I realized is when you have timers, for example, I use Stream Elements with the command bot. Um, and basically what it does is it does timers between 30 to 35 minute intervals about reminding people, you know, thank you for the likes, thank you for the subscribes, thank you for, you know, the donations. Everything that you all do helps keeping these channels going, right? So, and, and I am very grateful, I really am. But um, what it is, is it's a timed message. And I noticed that it kept relaying it amongst each other, which was very frustrating. And I think that as a viewer, because I myself go and watch certain people's live streams throughout time, um, I wouldn't want that spammed four or five times in a chat. So being mindful of that, you know, cause I watch the content that I enjoy, but I also think about things as a streamer, is this what I want my viewers to see? And the answer was no. So I turned off that particular feature. Um, and I do like being able to interact with them, but I don't want them to basically, you know, being spammed with those particular things. Other than that, I have to say cross-platform chatting wasn't bad most most of the time the environment is pretty good however every now and then from what i've noticed just doing the the multi streams is the experience that i'm still experiencing with a specific platform and you know that that's in itself a whole nother can of worms but um i can say that for the most part when you build the community that you're building most of the people who are interacting with you are people that you enjoy being around because they bring a positive vibe that you're already creating for your content but uh, if you're wanting to have growth, not just on one platform, but multiple platforms, these are definitely tools that are gonna be useful for you. Now, we're gonna go back to Restream here because what we're gonna talk about is pricing. I'm sure Aircast has their own pricing as well. 
but here are the pricings. So if you're doing standard, you're paying, I think, 20 bucks a month. Like if you're going monthly, right? You're paying, yeah, 19 a month. You're doing 49 for professional. But honestly, I don't see the need for this unless you're like a company, for example, like Nintendo or, you know, so some company that's pushing this out who is doing things between YouTube, Twitch. Um, I haven't seen Nintendo on Kick yet, but I'm sure that they have like all of these things that are being pushed out. But the standard, I think, is probably the ideal one for most people. And that's if you're actually like going into that. Um, it's really optional, right? But that's where multiple output comes in. Like if you didn't want to pay for this and you wanted the benefit of streaming, multi-streaming across all platforms, and you had a dedicated streaming PC, whether you're rocking a dual PC setup, um, I think that would be beneficial. Or if you're just doing a capture card console single PC and then running the multiple output with using your GPU for the encoding process, I think that you're good on that. But if you're going to do something where it's PC gaming, you should probably have a separate dedicated PC solely for gaming and then one for streaming if you're going to be doing that without the use of an aid of, for example, a service like Restream or Aircast or the other platforms that are out there. I would like to test the other platforms, but um, these are the only two that I'm aware of that can do the things that I want them to do in the way that I want. Anyways, thank you for watching, everybody. Take care and have a wonderful rest of your day.